Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the faction turn for Stars Without Number, uh, Phantom Horizons. We had our first episode last week, so I'm going to go through some stuff today, um, building up the factions, going over the faction turn. I don't know if I'll get a full faction turn in tonight, because I have to kind of build the the uh, system relevant factions out the ones that the players will be interacting with here and then perhaps um you know as we go along i can kind of flesh out all the factions because i have a bunch of them if you saw one of our session zeros i kind of went through a bunch of them some of them just aren't important in this sector of uh, this system this part of the sector so, like, for instance, uh, the Lunar Remnant doesn't have um, a bunch around here. They're more central space, um, that kind of stuff. But the, col uh, and the Colonial, this is like kind of the edge of Colonial Confederation space, but the Spacers Union, the Good Neighbors, uh, the Merchants Consortium, that kind of thing will have uh, influence out here, and they'll be quite strong out here. So we'll kind of talk about them a little bit tonight. So... Let's start to build out all the factions and such. Wow. Oh. I was like, what's that? <laughs> Reflecting. Okay, so let me pull up my rule book and my tablet. Okay, so first I have to start by giving um, each faction a force rating, which is uh, typically their aptitude at applying physical violence, the book says. So how militarily strong they are. Um, and it's not necessarily about numbers so much as aptitude. It's if you have elite strike forces and you know how to use them, you might have a higher force than someone who just has a standing army that's huge. Um, yeah. So it can be, you know, kind of either way. Cunning. Let's just see. I found this great faction sheet template on uh i think i found it on the stars without number uh reddit page there's a big list of uh useful and um uh yeah useful uh like sites and, and sheets and stuff so uh cunning is c espionage infiltration security covert manipulation uh, a rating of one implies a completely visible faction with no resources for resisting infiltration, while a rating of eight implies a faction a faction of Illuminati unknown to all but a handful of paranoid conspiracy mongers. Um, spy agencies, religious groups, eugenics cults, and terrorist groups tend to have high cunning, and I would imagine some, even some governments. Uh... And then finally, wealth rating, uh, and it's it's just it's even beyond literal credits. It's resources available too. So even if they don't have a lot of liquid money and they have a lot of assets that they can apply to things, they might have a high wealth. Oh, and each uh, each of these goes from one to eight. Okay. Uh, hit points are hit points. Let's see. And then I think I th think sorry I had something covering the bottom of my screen. That's the case. And then we get assets. Okay, good. So that's good. Faction turns. 
Okay, so this will be used to track my actions. And sector map, I'm not gonna use this sector map. Uh, it's pretty nice if you if you don't wanna, just a nice X, Y grid, but I have sectors without number, which is a great website. Uh, we are in the NEMA system. We just left Ruby Lighthouse. And uh, we are heading to the gas giant Vivero, which is uh, staffed by Axiom. And they are currently having a workers strike. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, I'm going to be giving each faction a home world. Uh, the kind of the, this right here, it, these kind of, this area is kind of the most civilized part of space. So we're, we're just on the outside part of that. I think one of these, one, okay, yeah, and there's, uh, one of the characters, uh, Marty Freya Darkmoon. There's her home planet and moon. Uh, I think Timothy's, yeah, Timothy's character, Lucifer's from way out here. And nobody else gave me anything specific. So uh, they can pick and they have access to this. And uh, I'd imagine, you know, probably somewhere up in here. Especially if uh, each of them wanted to get away. They're down here now which is a good kind of far out place for to go hide, but it's not like totally bereft of resources and, and all that jazz. So let's, let's go back over here. Let's start statting out these factions. So. Backgrounds. Uh, I think this might also be, yeah, for assets, but I'm gonna, I'll use this. It might, it might auto-generate. Yeah, maybe that'll auto-generate from in here. We'll see, okay. So let's start with probably the most important faction that we have in this sector a faction that Marty is affiliated with, the Merchants Consortium. Okay. Um, so, they, let's see, let me find, they give you, like, um, Kind of big thing. Here we go. Oh, no, not faction actions. Not buying and using assets. Factions. Here we go. Okay. Uh, the Merchants Consortium is system wide, so I'm going to give them a wealth rating of eight. Their second most important is one less than their primary, so cunning would be seven, and then is three less, so that's five. So they are a big deal. Um, okay. Tag. Let me read. Let me read what some of the tags do. Let's see, exchange consultants. Oh, consulate, sorry. Uh, Pacifist Society of Bankers and Diplomats. Yeah. Mercenaries, no, they're not quite Machiavellian. Plutocratic, that might be it. Yeah, I think they're they are plutocratic. So let me read. Faction prizes wealth, and its members strive constantly to expand and maintain personal fortunes. 
perhaps it is a ruling council of oligarchs or a star-spanning trade cartel. So yeah, that's um, that's definitely what they are. And their goal, commercial expansion, easy enough. Homeworld, I'm going to say they are from Kira. Yeah. Oops. Oh, the, the nice thing is, if you do fill out the sector map, you can use, you can drop down your own uh, uh, homeworld there. Relationship to the players is friendly because of oh, that's fine it's saying it's invalid i can fill out the planets later notes freya dark moon is a member okay so there's that um Um, two, so let's give them two assets. Merchants Consortium. And let's look at the, oh, this is going to be hard. They're probably going to have lots of good choices. Let's look at wealth assets for sure. Bank asset. Commodities broker. Oh, man. <laughs> Lawyers. Yeah. Marketers. <laughs> That's funny. You you deploy marketers to confuse enemy factions into untimely investments. Um so yeah, so all the assets, let me let me explain them a little better. All the assets are they're tools that can be used to uh, on as I the faction turn. So, for instance, you know, simply, if I was, if this was a more traditional military faction, they might have a capital fleet, and I could use that capital fleet. There it is. I could use that capital fleet to go attack another person and be like, "Cool." And then there are mechanics for it, and I make little rolls and stuff. So right now, I am just trying to build out this stuff. It'll be a little more interesting when I can actually kind of uh, leverage them against each other. But we'll get there. Wealth assets. Oh, man, these are all good. They have Union Tufts, which is funny because they are currently um, trying to not break up a strike, but trying to deal with a strike. That was a bit of what the first episode was about. Let me see. Ooh, what's Hostile Takeover? Ooh, yeah, Hostile Takeover. So, man, some of these are crazy. Like, I'm sure you saw Cyber Ninjas are in there, Hitmen, uh, Lawyers. Um, yeah, a lot. And, and then these correspond to there are wealth assets, cunning assets, and force assets. I'm trying to do wealth assets right now because the Merchants Consortium is primarily about wealth. So Hostile Takeover. This asset can seize control of damaged and poorly controlled assets. If a hostile takeover does enough damage to destroy an asset, the target is in re instead reduced to one hit point and acquired by the hostile takeover's owning faction. Excellent. Man. Oh, boy. And then I think I'm going to do bank asset. I think that's just easy enough. Okay, so that was the, it says uh, two assets in their primary and two assets in different assets. 
Oh, but to give regional hegemons, which is I'm going to consider the Merchants Consortium. They're kind of one of the really big ones. They kind of stretch the sector. Wow. Okay, yeah, now the Merchants Consortium is a big deal. So, this is good because it gives me a little more range to... Um, Use some of the ones that I think are cool. I'm going to definitely add lawyers. And then... Lawyers. And then commodities broker. I think that makes sense. They substantially lessen the cost of large-scale investments by timing material purchases properly. I think that works that works well for the idea that it's it's not necessarily a single it's not a single corporation it's a it's essentially a, a galactic union they all talk and it's the trade federation from star wars it's you know it's they have lots of different business interests and it's kind of you know all the ceos join like there's a gentleman's club for lack of a better term but it it is, um, you know, kind of. They're not controlling things, but they're 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 a real big deal. They're just a real big deal. So they get four more. I'm going to focus primarily on cunning because I don't think they would have a lot of force, but I will look at it. Uh, for instance, blackmail. Uh, lobbyists? Oh, definitely lobbyists. For sure. No, yeah, they are... <laughs> yeah, no, they are petitioning somebody somewhere to make sure that their space cigarettes are legal because, you know, the CEO owes this guy a favor and all that jazz. So let's see. Smugglers... Hmm. Sorry, let me. Hmm. Let me let me look at force just in case there's something. Now these are a lot of Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, they they it's pretty much all soldiers I, I was hoping there'd be. I don't even know what. Let's see. What is so what's their cunning score again? It's 7. So what's a cunning 7? Why? Hmm. These techniques involve selective pressure on local routing and shipping companies. Yes, yeah, so let's do transportation lockdown. They won't be the only ones in that field, but they can kind of press their weight and make sure that happens and then one last one. Let's just do informers. They willing to pay people to watch their backs. There we go. Okay. So it's the biggest faction in the in the sector in a lot of ways, and definitely in the outskirts of space where the uh, colonial confederation is a lot weaker they like i said before they kind of tend to uh live in this sector of space and i actually might move i don't think i can oh 
Can I do that? Oh yeah, perfect. Cause I I do I do like these outskirt areas, but I kind of want to bring in just simply so there is a little bit of a core. Maybe just spread these out a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a little maybe like to there and then there. I don't want it to be like too patterny, but let's move. Oh, and then I'm gonna move like. Oh no, where's Kira? Oh no, I'm oh, sorry. It's, it's the fire. <laughs> what? I'm changing that system name because I can't pronounce it. M Mar no. No. Uh, and a Fala. That's pretty good. This website's great, by the way, if you're playing Stars Without Number. Yeah, so I'm going to consider this the core. And then once again, Nima's way out here. And this is kind of like, maybe this can be like, kind of like a secondary core. Like it's the, this is where like the Merchants Consortium is the biggest deal. And um, yeah, I kind of like that. So they're kind of the biggest, the big the big traders out here, the Colonial Confederation, and, and not that the Merchants Consortium doesn't have influence everywhere. They do, just as the Colonial Confederation does, but they have less influence. Uh, they just, they have a lot more powerful holdings here, but I'm kind of making them the biggest deal in the sector. So let's see. Who else do we have? And how long have we been doing? Half an hour, awesome. Let's do the Spacers Union. So they're going to be a little bit of a minor faction. They're important everywhere, but they're not a huge deal. So let's look at the minor faction tag, uh, minor faction things. Let's see, minor factions should have a four in their most important attribute, which I'm going to make. Cunning. Okay. Oh, so that's okay. That's helpful. That's true for everything. They don't have space. They don't have anything. They don't have planet busters or anything like that. So. Okay. Okay, asset tracker, so they are gonna get they're gonna get two. One in cunning and one in wealth. So oh faction tags. Let's see. Um, hmm. I don't want to do <laughs> plutocratic again. Machiavellian? That feels a little sinister for what I was picturing them as. Perimeter agency? No, that's not quite right either. Hmm. Imperialists, no. Secret of scavengers. Scavengers might work. That's Perceptor Archive. Oh. Not theocratic, not a planetary. I think I'm just going to go with scavengers. And their goal is expand influence. Simple enough. 
neutral. That's that tracker. So they get two. So their wealth is, I'm going to go with Union Tufts. And cunning, cunning, covert shipping. Okay, so that's that's them. Faction tracker. Let's see. And like I said, I'm only gonna do the ones that are. I might, I might, I probably won't stat everything out tonight just because I have so many factions, uh, which I'm not supposed to have, but that's fine. So the good neighbors, we never decided if they were sinister or sincere. I'm going to roll a die. Evens is sinister. Odds is sincere. They are sincere. So. They're tag, man. <laughs> A lot of these tags are negative is the problem. I'm going to do, go with perimeter agency. Well, but doesn't that just make them like... I have like space rangers somewhere else. So let's make them creepy. Are they a eugenics cult? Fanatical. Planetary seizure. Almost certainly would be hostile. Oh, uh, let's go Force Cunning Wealth. Okay, getting the hang of this. This is good. I hope this is not totally boring to watch. So, uh, it gives you kind of a little... Let's see if, let's see if you can actually read my tablet if I flip it around. Uh... It gives you a little chart here, um, which uh, kind of breaks down the the rank and what would be associated with them. So, for instance, Force Eight is Capital Fleet. You know, only the you know the Empire in Star Wars has the Capital Fleet because they have a Force of Eight. The Rebellion would probably have a Force of like five. They got snub fighters and a couple Capital ships. They don't have a fleet. So they have a four, and their four, the, the, the top for force is Beachhead Landers, Extended Theater, Strike Fleet. I think Strike Fleet. Kind of maybe like a ragtag collection of uh, ships they can use, and then... Go with a cunning attribute. Smugglers. Or gorilla populace. That's pretty good. What does it recommend? What? Oh no, gorilla populace is a. Oh, I think gorilla populace is better for good neighbors. And then. What did I say? Smugglers. And they can buy more assets if they get the money and and stuff like that. So that's, that's the good neighbors. Let's see. Who else is out here? Let's do some stuff for the Twitch. I don't know why I got bolded. Okay. Oh man, they technically have force, so let's go th three, four, and one. So the Twitch is a lot like, you know, Twitch. It's streamers. 
uh, but they they stream uh, giant robot fights. So one of our members is a member of the Twitch. Let me, or is a former member of the Twitch. Let me say. So, ooh, would that make would that make them? Oh, I gotta pick home worlds. Uh, Zephyr is a former member, but she was she left surrounded in lots of controversy. Um, so I I'm gonna put neutral for now. Uh, but it, it could switch to hostile at any time. So let's see. Uh, what's Wealth of Worlds tag? Yep. Action tags. Why are you not? I don't see it on the listed faction tags. The last one they have is Warlike. I also don't see Valor. I'm going to go with Commer Expand Influence. I mean, I, I think they care about money, obviously, but... Ah, uh, boy. Machiavellian. Twitch. Twi oh, and that's not good, because they're not, they're not cunning. Uh, mercenary group. They're technically a mercenary group. In, in my version, obviously. Um, so they have wealth. Well, I think they're going to have a base of influence. Let's see. No, maybe not. Lawyers. Mercenaries. Monopoly. Monopoly. Okay, and then let's go with force. Not too far. Let's see, force. They're heavy drop assets. Let's see. Oh yeah, heavy drop assets because they they are mech warriors, and I can let them drop mechs. Okay, perfect. Okay, faction tracker. Let's do a couple more and then we'll take a faction turn. Okay. Hmm. I can do Vatican X, the Seventh Sanctum. Let's do the colonial confederation out here like I said they're, they're not going to be necessarily a big deal but they're a big deal in the galaxy so they're I'm going to say they're a little underfunded but they know what they're doing Let's see, so where's the... Now that kinda... Let's, I'm gonna move. Because I, what I said about the, about Kyra being the head of the, hmm. The Merchants Consortium. Maybe it's not. Ooh. Flying cities. I think the call system and Sorrow 
Edit. Cando. Eh. Corafal. Corafali. I like Corafali. I think that's going to be the the head of or the home world of the. So like I said, the technically the the merchants consortium is from here, but. And they have, again, they have influence all over space, but I'm going to say they have stronger influence in this kind of checkmark shaped thing. Uh, the Twitch, let's say the Twitch. Let's say the Twitch is at a space station. They're going to be at Arima Lighthouse. The good neighbor, I want them to be part of this. Mitchell 9, I that, I didn't even make that one up. That was, was pre-generated. I just think it's so funny. Uh, let's see. Tis, tis, tisalus? Tisalus? Tisalus. Let's say Tisalus is the home of the good neighbors. That can't be right. How do you spell that? T, T Silas. And the Spacers Union. They should be from another lighthouse. Let's see. The Dune Lighthouse. Okay. So, when I'm determining major assets, uh, major powers, two in their primary, two in different. I got a total of four, and two in cunning. Their score was a six. So, oh man, there's some good ones. P Party machine. I definitely think. Right, because I mean, let me read Party Machine. Political blocks control particular cities or regions. Blocks are firmly controlled, are firmly in control of the faction. Each turn, yeah. Hmm. Oh, cracked cons. I kind of like the idea that they are just. Now they just kind of sit there and they, they they're not necessarily going to do anything with it but oh no demagogue let me go demagogue because cracked comms is actually like you essentially hack someone's uh, fleet and then you force them to shoot at each other which I don't quite think is here Okay, so let's see. Force, let's do one force. What's their force score? Three. Um, counter, I think they have counter intel. Let's, like, I don't... I don't picture them as very military esque, but they can they can defend themselves and they kinda their their cunning is high. They're wielding that. So I like counter intel. And then What's their wealth again? So score fives. So marketers, pre tech, blockade runners. 
Okay, bank, medical center, monopoly, shipping, combine. Oh, what are surveyors? Because that might have been good for... Uh... Yeah, I think that... That makes sense. Let me see surveyor. I'll read that out. Uh, explore potential resource and investment options on world. Uh, the presence of a surveyor clue allows one additional die roll to be rolled on expand influence. Yeah, I think that makes sense. They're trying to kind of shore up what they have and that kind of... I think that makes sense. Makes sense to me, at least. Okay, they are a planetary government, sort of. And they hope to expand influence. So let me, let me read about goals again real fast. Let's see. Action goals. Uh, faction is usually have motivations and goals beyond simple existence. To grow, a faction needs to accomplish goals that are in line with their leadership's purposes. Successful achievement of these goals helps them grow. A faction can pursue one goal at a time. Once a goal is successfully attained, the faction may select a new goal at the beginning of their next turn or delay until a good opportunity arises. Uh, they can choose to abandon them, but that's not good. It'll gain experience points. Oh, and I can I could change that if I wanted to. Oh, I was looking in the wrong thing for goal. I was wealth of world is a tag, not a or a goal, not a tag. Oh, weird. And you just want to spend money. Okay, and then there are there are level up things for for that as well. Um. And so, I got, I got five factions right now. Let me, let me do one more. Who else is good? There's some creepy ones. I got a lot of nice ones in here. Uh, nice, quote unquote, friendly to the Merchants Consortium, Spacers Union. The Twitch, really the only super not great one is the Good Neighbors. So let's go with Ultima Thule, who are a doomsday cult. And let's also do... The Seventh Sanctum. I think both of those make sense as, as kind of outskirtsy. They're back out here in the, the sec this sector of space where they're not getting too much pressure from outside forces. So Ultima Thule is four, three, one. And the seventh sanctum is six. Uh, Psychic Academy. Uh, they're going to be below the enemy. No, no, wait, no. I'm sorry. Um... I think they're inside enemy territory. Have a number of stealth assets on worlds with other planetary governments equal to your cunning score. Uh, so, so for this one, it's because Ultima Thule is, if if you recall, a doomsday cult, and they kind they they're a doomsday preparedness cult, and because the they're perfectly rational in a way because. Uh, yeah, the world keeps almost ending. It almost happened. It's 
the scream happened. Earth is in shambles. They don't necessarily know that, but it is. Um, and, you know, they're kind of on the verge of, of collapse at all times at this point. Prepare yourselves. And I think they want to kind of infiltrate governments and get sympathetic people who can be like, no, we need to help these people prepare. And then other people are like, yeah, no, end of the world, let's do it. So let's see, tags, fanatical, for sure. And then, I think intelligence coup. Asset tractor. And then we're going to take eight. How many do I have? Do I have seven? Let me do one more. Do I do a nice one or a mean one? Let's do the lensed star. And they are going to be four, three, one. They are, no way. Oh, no, technical expertise. There we go. And intelligence coup. Let's do uh, Ultima Thule is minor, so they get two. Seventh Sanctum is major, so they get four. And Lenstar is minor, so they get two. Oops. They get two. You can still see that, right? I have a window over there. Okay. Um, let's see. Ultima Thule. Which I wish I could claim I made up, but it is the name of some star or comet or something. Or a Conan bad guy, I think, we established. Uh, let's see. Force and Cunning. So, Ew, what are seditionists do? Hmm. Yeah, they just kind of get you from the inside. That's kind of cool. Informs false front. What about false front? Eh, no, nah, that's not quite them. Sabot Blackmail? Saboteurs. Let's go with saboteurs. What else do they have? They got force. So... Militia unit. Seventh Sanctum. They are psychics. I know there's psychic something in here. Let's see. Psychic assassins. Yeah, they do. And then they are cunning. So they get two cunning, and I'll give them one wealth. Stealth. Cyber Ninjas. <laughs> nah, this might be a little too much for them. Stealth. Ooh, and maybe they can do something post-tech. Let's see. Let's stealth do. Oh, you can use it to... So stealth is like something you buy to put on something else. You can essentially... It's an add-on to give it the stealth feature. Let's go with blackmail instead. 
I feel like that's good for a psychic agency. Or Book of Secrets? Book of Secrets is cool. Yeah, no, Book of Secrets is pretty is pretty psychic y. Let me read that. It's um exclusively catalog psychometric records on important and influential local figures, allowing uncanny accuracy in predicting their actions. Yeah, no, that's cool. That is cool. And then I get a well I'm gonna give him a wealth one too. See that what's post tech industry? Ooh. Let's go with R and D. I feel like they would be constantly trying to kind of replace old lost technology. And I'm gonna do R and D for I'm going to do surveyors and R&D for uh, the Lens Star. Yep. Okay. So let's let's take a faction turn. Did I? Oh, let me give them. Okay, Ultima Thule. Let me let me do that real fast. Where's the most remote part of space? End up. Colazen is going to be where Ultima Thule is based. The seventh sanctum I want to be in the core. Air, I don't like that name. Edit. A not meh. Ada. That's kind of nice. I kind of like that. Ugh, Laos. It's Laos, you know. Nalsetta. I like Nalsetta. And Lens Star, I'm going to have kind of out here. Prita. Prita Simalis. Uh, let's see. Lens Star is friendly because of uh, Daniel's character. And Dr. Manson is a former member. Uh, oh, no. Seventh Sanctum. And the Seventh Sanctum, if I didn't say, is a psychic guild. Um, okay. Faction turns. Faction turns. Okay, so we got to roll a d8. Where are all my d10s? Where's my d8? There's a d8. Oh, man, where? Sorry. This is just a big section, so let's see. Man. I know it's in here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I rolled a d8 and I got seven, so the seventh sanctum goes first. So let's see. At the beginning of each turn, a faction gains credits equal to half their rate, uh, their wealth rounded up. 
plus one quarter of force and cunning rounded down. Okay. Uh, so is that, let's see. So is that is that what income is perhaps? That it did this calculate it for me? So let's do an easy one. Half. So that's four plus eleven divided by four is two. Four, or is it three? Oh, it's three. Duh. No, wait. I can do math. Hold on. This is rounded down, so... Am I crazy? Oh, because I can't do math. 5 plus 7 is not 11. Oh, boy. Um, no, that's 12. Duh. Okay, so yeah, so it did the math for me. That's nice. Um, okay. No, I did. I did four. Yeah, I I know I did the wrong. Okay, so they're gonna start with seven. So everybody's gonna start with all this. So first of all, let me make sure <laughs> they can all keep everything because this has like upkeep and, and stuff okay so let me hold on let me get my what are the actions I can take I knew I should have gotten music. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll have music. Here we go. Factions. So they can attack, buy an asset, change homeworld, expand influence, refit asset, repair asset, sell asset, seize planet, or use asset ability. Okay, so the seventh sanctum. The seventh sanctum. What's Book of Secrets? Let me see what Book of Secrets does again. I don't know. That lets them reroll. So that's kind of cool. Let's, let's. I didn't give them. No, did I give them Slimer Ninjas? Uh, let me not do that. Blackmail. I think they're going to try something big out the gate. So let me look at Psychic Assassins. Okay. Let me see. I don't know what this does. Upkeep? Oh, upkeep. Boy, okay. Sorry. Um, still learning about all this. Okay, so the Seventh Sanctum is going to attempt to expand their influence so they're in Nalseta which if I remember correctly is over here yeah hmm 
Now, you know what? Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to... I, Because I don't know what everyone I want everyone to do yet. So I'm going to start by building up these factions. So I'm going to start adding assets. So the Seventh Sanctum... Yeah, I want I want to buy I want them to buy assets. So the Seventh Sanctum has five creds. Cause then I can Yeah, because I'll be able to sort these later. So let me sort A to Z. Uh okay. Did that mess me up? No, okay, good. It doesn't. It doesn't mess up. Okay. I was afraid for a second that this would have been like, can I, can I undo? I can undo. Okay. Just to make sure. Okay. Yeah, unless I want to just have people attack. Maybe one of the other. So I think the Seventh Sanctum is, yeah, going to buy something this turn. So they got five let me look at oh went too far i was like well, well gluttony enjoy those are alien rules and what is their yeah what is their intelligence coup so what does that mean they want to do Destroy a number of cunning assets in their, oh, with a rival faction. So who would... Who would the Seventh Sanctum... Oh, well, probably Ultima Thule. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so maybe we'll go after Ultima Thule. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna punch down on Ultima Thule. Attack Ultima Thule. Let's, let's, let's look at the attack rules. Okay. Attack. Attack is the attacking is the chief way by which a faction assaults a rival's assets. Um uh, it's up to the GM or players to describe an attack and its methods. Attacks can be launched against any known assets. If a rival has stealth assets on a world, they cannot be targeted. To launch an attack, the selector selects the attacker selects one or more assets. So what does Ultima Thule have? They have seven. so I think they're gonna send psychic assassins after a militia unit. Which I don't I don't think is going to go well for that militia unit. So, to launch an attack, uh, each attacking assets can roll only once per turn. Each defending asset, though a defending asset can defend as many times as the defender wishes, assuming it can survive multiple conflicts. Okay, so if I, if I, for instance, sent like three militia units after something, they could all attack, they could all be, def they could all... No, reverse that. If I send three militia units against five militia, or against two militia units, they can keep defending as long as they, they survive. That makes sense. Um, once matched, the attacker rolls a d10 and adds the relevant modifier. There's a d12 here, my spangly d10. And the relevant modifiers. So, asset trackers. Psychic assassins are force. Militia unit is force. Three and three, easy enough. Okay. So, seven sanctum. Ooh. Um, 
Timoth Sanctum got an 8 plus 3 is 11. Ultima Thule got a 6 plus 3, which is only 9. And the Psychic Assassin. Ooh, 2d6 plus 2. Ooh, yep. So they are going to wipe out that. Uh, and uh, the defending assets are damage. Uh, if the defender has a base of... No, they don't. Okay. So, the Seventh Sanctum destroys a militia unit of Ultima Thule on... Endocolism. Okay, but that's secret. So, my players don't know about it. Secret players. I might tell some of them about some of this stuff. Not that but they can also just watch this. I really, it's really fine. <laughs> Attack Ultima Thule on Homeworld Destroy uh, Militia Units. Okay, so that's their turn. Which means Asset Tracker. Bye bye. Oh, oh crap. Undo. Whatever I just did, undo it. Uh, yeah, delete. And delete. And I'm going to have to... Ultima Thule's turn is most likely going to be attempting to recoup something. Okay. So that was the Seventh Sanctum's turn. So the next up one is the Lensed Star. What is rule? Let's see what R and D can let them do. Oh, that's cool. Or surveyors. Surveyors lets them do something with expand influence. Explore investments. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's see if Lens Star can expand some influence. So. Oh, so they have to buy a base of influence. So how much does that cost? Yes, it is required for purchasing and upgrading units on a particular world. Anyway, the cost equals its maximum hit points, which can be any of its... Okay, okay, so you use Expand Influence to buy a base. Um, the faction buys a base of influence, so I'm going to have... Where's Lens Star from? Prita. There we go. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so they're going to buy a base and it can be up to 15 they have 3 so they're going to buy a ba oh, I didn't actually use this so Lens Star they're going to buy a base of influence 
special. I'm gonna make it three. Three. Okay. Uh, the faction rolls against similar rolls by every other faction on the planet. So, I'm going to say there is one other faction on the planet. Spangly Dice is Lens Star. Let's say the Colonial Confederation is also on the planet. So, uh, Lens Star wins. Okay. Pressure pays one for every hit point to base up to a maximum of pieces with few hit points are relatively peripheral affluence needs to, to dislodge. Oh, and you can use, okay, and then I can use this again later to um, buy better versions of it uh, or to upgrade the hit points that it has because it doesn't have very many hit points. So that's that faction turn. So they bought a expanded influence. Influence on homeworld okay the merchants consortium our big gun so they've got lots of assets let's see what hostile takeover can do i uh, know it's wealth not cunning I think I need to buy something for the Merchants Consortium. I think they need to buy just a little militia unit. I think that's what they're going to do this turn. Because I think I want to have them start getting a little more serious and a little more... Uh, yeah. Bought militia units which cost not a lot, right? Oh, that's cunning. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't cost a lot. Okay. Because, yeah, I, I think I want them to... They're going to have to be the movers and the shakers in this part of space, so I want them to start... And they're getting maybe a little worried about uh, this union strike... Not that they're going to go blow it up or anything like that, but there's unrest in this part of this uh, this part of space. And again, not that they're necessarily going to go in the offensive, but they need to be worried about people. If people start to take things into their own hands, especially with, you know, Ultima Thule and um, the good neighbors kind of eyeing up the outskirts of space where they think they can pick off planet by planet. Although Ultima Thule just took that down. So the Spacers Union. Oh, let's see, Union Tufts. Let me see what Union Tufts can do. A wealth. Yeah. I think Union Tufts are going to perform some sabotage on a different mining station. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let's see. Gas Giant Mine. Here we go. No. Uh, now let's see. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's that's what I want. Way out there. So I think they're gonna okay, so they're gonna make an attack roll out here to maybe Yeah. I wanna say they're they're not really 
Ooh. Okay. So Union Tufts are going to start breaking up a... Um, what is this called? The Sucre Project. Okay, the good neighbors. These guys are creepy AF. So, what do we have for factions for them? Smugglers and a gorilla populace. Okay. The good neighbors are going to way down here. Yeah. They're going to attack the local government of Herte. And ooh, shockingly, they're going to win. They don't do a lot of damage. One D four plus one. I only did one. So I'm gonna say uh so Herte. Uh Herte kinda of, they they don't have a lot, they just have a little militia unit. So and they have taken two damage from good neighbors. Neighbors, a gorilla strike on her tan. Govt. I can spell words. Okay, the Twitch. I think I want them to expand influence. Okay. And how much do they have? They don't have a lot, so I'm going to have them. Expand their base of influence on the Arima Lighthouse. So, the Twitch, base of influence, perfect. Okay. Uh, establish the OI on. Colonial Confederation. I think they're going to expand influence. They have that money, right? Yeah. So they're also going to buy a base of influence. Where do I want them to put theirs? They're going to put theirs on Dallas. So they're expanding a little outside. Uh, now let me let me put it on their home world because that's And Ultima Thor I'm going to have buy something because that's the wrong one. They do not have a lot of money. Cost. They're just going to buy security personnel because they lost a militia unit. Yeah. Okay. So. That was the first faction turn. Uh, lots of building up. Uh, and I'll add more. Uh, we got a little more time. Maybe I can... They don't... Maybe I don't have to...
I don't necessarily have to um, build them out a lot, but let me let me let me just at least kind of stat out some of the other ones. So we got Pax Terra. Lunar Remnant. Vivictus. And if they go into other parts of the sector and, and um, the system, these guys will be more important. Uh, oops. The fourth estate. The Spectrum. The Ward. Uplifted. Oops. Exalted children. See what I mean when I had a lot said I had a lot of them, but I didn't want to because some of these don't necessarily Radican X. Okay. And I will add some of these things later. I'm going to poke at this and then maybe we can talk about this the next the next faction turn stream because uh, the the group won't have done enough to justify another faction turn. So the book suggests you kind of do it. Man, I washed out. Sorry. What was it? because I usually have my face over the other side. Is that better? That's a little better. Oh my, I'm shiny. Um, I'm cold too. I'm not even sweaty. Um, so so the the book suggests one you don't do this many. Fa you don't do a billion factions, and that you know kind of after every mission or adventure is when you do it, or about a month, every month of like time passing. I think. So I'm probably gonna do every mission or adventure. Um, they've only had one episode. They're probably not even halfway through what they have to do yet so maybe around episode three i'll kind of reset and do a full faction turn but next time i'll build out some of these additional factions kind of do what we did here maybe talk about what's happening in other parts of the sector because actually i didn't even influence a lot of what's happening around them i know maybe i should do something about that so we'll see next time but i think that's where where we'll wrap it up this time it's you know, the big ones I really wanted to get on the the board. When I, oh, they bought something. Bought. Security personnel. Um, yeah, because otherwise, that's, that is an awful lot of factions. So maybe I'll see, I'll see how this is working. See how... Uh, I know, I, I'm sure I didn't do some of the rules right. Uh, it probably, especially probably because... If they have a high wealth, they should probably start with a higher balance. So I'm gonna go over these rules again. I'm still learning the system, but I mean, I it's fun to just be back here and roll dice, and you can kind of see like, ooh, you know, oh man, you know, the Seven Sanctum rolled really poorly, and this militia guerrilla group uh, got it up uh, and and worked it out. Um, so yeah. So I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. Thank you for joining me. Um, this week on Laughing Dragon Inn, uh, Wednesday we have Spelljammer. Next Monday, or Monday, coming up, is Call of Cthulhu Twilight Trails. It's our character creation stream. It's totally live. It hasn't been pre-recorded already, and it's very fun. Uh, come check that out. Task Force Unlikely will be back next week. Lots of great stuff happening at the Laughing Dragon Inn. Uh, Phantom Horizons Episode 2 will be uh, the first week of March. So, uh, March, geez. The first week of June. It feels like March outside is the problem. It was rainy and cold today. Um, doesn't feel like May at all. So, please come join us. Uh, lots of cool stuff happening. Lots of fun stuff happening. I promise you it's, uh, <laughs> you know... It's cool. 
I don't know, man. You just watched me talk at a screen full of numbers for an hour and a half. So I hope it was enjoyable. Um, yeah. Have a good night, everybody. And be nice to each other. Because...